Welcome back, everybody, to the Omniverse Comics Guide podcast. We are your Omniverse Comics Guide guys. How you doing, dude? I missed you. It's been Aww. two weeks now. It's been two weeks, isn't it? A two. long two weeks. Do you not find it? It just feels longer every time. The emotion. It does. It does. I miss it. Yeah, no, I, I look forward to coming back because it's like, you know, something's missing. Sometimes that little break is okay, but then after a while, it's like, no, we got we to gotta get back into the swing of things. So we're back into the swing of things. We're so back. thank you, everybody. Swing us. Let's do it. <laughs> Omega Bread is here. Meat Trunks is here. Yansom is here. Uh, let's get the show on the road. Thank you, everybody, for watching on Twitch every week. Don't forget to rate, subscribe, and share, as well as you watching on YouTube after the fact. And every podcast platform that you listen to us on, we very much appreciate it. Hit that like and subscribe button for us. It helps us make better stuff for you. And of course, if you want to have fun reading comics, omniversecomics.guide is your one-stop shop for having a good time. Knowing where you are in the comic book universe, Dave has made all these special kinds of reading lists and orders and reviews. It's, it's a great help, especially for someone like me who is just reading crisis on infinite earth so i'm about to maybe dabble into secret wars that reading Ooh. list is going to be very helpful cool i was going to say well, like, yeah. i haven't done crisis yet but that is coming it will come it one will day come. it will come yeah this year hopefully would you would would you consider have you bought the crisis on infinite earth's companion yeah i was wondering if that would be helpful yeah I've or got, if it would I've be got just all, yeah yeah have you read any of them? Or I've already. Them or... um, yeah, I did manage to have a flick through, but I'm gonna, yeah, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna read through properly. And there is a suggested reading order in there, but you know, that's kind of it's a good basis. But I normally pick things apart and go, um, no. Uh. <laughs> so I'm kind of gonna do my own thing. But I want I want to see how because it continues th while the continuity continues. We're gonna get into a heavy thing. I'll try not to, to go too heavy, but because it continues That's as okay. the continuity of the of the pre crisis DC universe goes on, I'm gonna be trying. I'm gonna try and read pretty much everything I can get my hands on from that period for those twelve months, and just see how it all slots together. Because okay. sometimes what happens in one story that's not a tie in impacts another, which moves another round, and blah 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 blah. And it's not as straightforward as going that goes there, that goes there. So you've you've got to really kind of pick it apart so yeah there, a lot of a lot of work goes in but god i love it as long as you love it then you, you tap into that muse mm. and there you go that's why you make the the website so so good uh it doesn't make sense that i went on a holiday and coming back into the cold i'm trying to fight a cold and i'm thinking that i could use a little pick me up what was that stuff you talked about last oh, time magic dude. mind magic mind it's funny because like do you know what I thought I'd do is just have a little break and just experiment. You know how cynical I am. So I thought I'd just see if those if it was any different, Magic Mind, because I, 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 I like knowing that what, you know, because it's got all the healthy stuff in, which is grand, but like, is it having the effect? I think it is. So I took a little break and I've noticed I'm, I haven't been quite as focused as I want to be because that's been the problem I've had, as I said before. My focus isn't brilliant. Um, I drink too much coffee. Yeah, you know, all all the all the bad stuff, and like my memory is really bad. So so, taking a break from it, I've noticed that yeah, my my focus has dropped, my caffeine intake has increased. <laughs> all the stuff that I was kind of getting on balance has started to go again. So mm -hmm. yeah, I need to get back on it. I need to jump back on that train because like it's genuinely made me feel much better, more awake, more alert, more in tune, more focused. It's very difficult to, to like focus when you've got a brain that's constantly like, whoa, what's that over there? I'm like, a, I'm like three squirrels made into a human. It's, it's really difficult for me to pay attention to any one thing at any given time. And especially you know, you've got two kids and you've got jobs and you've got, you know, Omniverse and all this kind of stuff. It. And imagine trying to read Crisis on Infinite Earths without focus. <laughs> uh, I'll tell you one thing. I, I reread a lot of those pages. I could have used some magic mind for that one. So I got to wow. get on the train. You know the answer, dude. Good stuff. If you jump on to www.magicmind.com and use the code Omniverse20, you can get yourself an extra 20% off. Mention us. It's like turning up and going, hey, you know there's Omniverse guys? And they go, yeah, man, you're cool. You can come in. It's that. It's like a speakeasy for healthy brain shiz. That's how they, they like to be referred us. to. They're going to use that line. That, that, that's the promo of promo. That's it. Brain, <laughs> brain shiz. Healthy brain shiz. Uh, well, it's uh, 
our favorite time of the month in many ways where we talk about the books that we're looking forward to buying. Yes, we are. I haven't bought anything that came out in 2024 yet. <gasps> dude, dude. I know. How dare me? I'm looking forward to get to hitting up a comic book shop and uh, purchasing some new stuff to read so that I can have something at the end of the year mm-hmm. to list. Because mm-hmm. so far, it's all books that I've been meaning to read. <laughs> Things have been sitting on my shelf for a while and I'm trying to get to. And I'm like... Make sure you got something to list because it's going to be so far. It's, you're already in March. and I think I find I do this every year, though. I start the year thinking like, yeah, I'll, you know, I'll buy the stuff and it'll sit there and I'll read a couple of books. But I mostly want to kind of cheer myself up and go back and read some of the, the old good stuff. So, And there is a mix of that in, as you can tell, from my choices tonight. Right. Okay. Well, uh, why don't you go first this week? Okay. I, I can't find a me... coin. So yeah. <laughs> let's just do it. All right. Thanks, man. That's very kind of you. My first pick for the night is one that I mentioned to a degree last week. So I'm not going to I'm not going to go into it massively. But I'm, you know, obviously, some people may see this episode, not last week's episode. But I did talk a little bit in our Q&A episode. And thanks again to everyone who sent in questions. That, that was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun to edit. So, you know, it's like a fun episode when I'm like watching it going. Like, what? <laughs> I mentioned World's Finest by Mark Wade and Dan Mora. Uh, now, it's rare that we yes. kind of mention a volume three or mid-range volume of a series, but I'm digging this enough that I have to mention this. So volume volume one I liked, and there are all these questions about whether it sits in continuity or not. Like we said last week, don't worry about whether it sits in continuity or not. However, if you do want to know, the first story arc does have elements that lead into Lazarus Planet, the big modern-day DC event which was happening around the same time. The second storyline has elements that lead into Kingdom Come, and I don't want to spoil too much. So no doubt, Volume 3, this is Volume 2. Look at it there, it's pretty. Volume 3 will no doubt have elements that also play into modern-day DC continuity. I don't know why it's such a thing. People go like, but how can it possibly? Like, don't worry about it. Pick it up, have fun. It's full of guest stars. Batman is in the blue costume. and Oh my God, how much I've missed Batman in a blue and gray costume. I don't know why. I didn't know. I didn't think I'd care. But there is something really satisfying about seeing him in the old costume. Right? As I was, I, I'm going to mention this a bunch now, but as I was reading that Crisis book, it made me want to go and read uh, Batman and the Outsiders because they're all in it and Batman's in his, you know, the the, the blue and gray yeah. suit. And I'm just like... And it's Alan Davis. The, oh. these, this is... Yeah, Alan Davis and Jim Aparo. Yeah, it's mm. nice looking stuff. So it made me it made me want to go back and just check out all those books that I got on my shelf that have kind of been pick me, read me next. And <laughs> and Batman and the Outsiders is one of them. Oh. Yeah. But this this series is uh I'm desperately want to read it. I just don't know I how really I want to collect you'd it. Like it. Um I I probably love it's it. It's tricky with DC because it does kind of feel like you don't know what they're going to release as an omnibus. Like with, with Marvel, it seems like let's release um, these pictures of my shoelaces as an omnibus this week. It's like the, some of the stuff they've, they've said it's coming out later in the year. I'm not excited because <laughs> it just feels like it's not scraping the barrel, but you're kind of going, why? So bit strange DC, they'll do something as an omnibus. It's like when they did maybe not the best example, but they, they, when they released futures end, so futures end had a, a, f- of what was it 50 something issue series it was nearly as long as 52 or it was 48 49 issues something like that and right. then they had a load of one shots that were kind of tied into what the main titles were at the time but they released the one shots as the omnibus but not the main series explain it should almost be the other way around you know so you never quite know right. with dc so i've given up i've given up wait in because i want these books on my shelf so i'm i'm getting them in this the small it's regular size format like regular size hardcover it's not even oversized i think they should just go with oversized all the time personally but that's just my preference but this one collects issues 12 to 17 it's 168 pages the arts by dan mora again it's written by mark wade as i said it's got metamorpho in this one they they love their guest stars in this stuff and i thought like volume one felt a little too guest star heavy for me made a lot of other people happy but for me it was just like okay how about this is like you're cramming too much in but it seems like they've hit a nice pace with it now and it actually says that this is the world's finest strangest adventure and like i love me some strange yeah i'm really excited man like like i, I see this being advertised like i've got to have it i'm having it i'm having this book i don't care i don't care what happens my kids can't That's have cool. shoes for the month I'm, I'm having this book 
I'm I'm really really excited for it. It's it's great to have a modern day DC book, a modern day book from any of the big two that I am genuinely really hyped for for it to come out. Yeah, that's cool. I I desperately want to read this because I feel it's right up my alley, oh, especially it if it's not. Yeah, I I love Superman and Batman. It's very well documented. Uh, I'm just waiting for this to be in some sort of format where you get a little bit more, maybe an omnibus or maybe like a deluxe edition, like you said. But I might That's just okay. dip my toe in and yeah, just get get into reading it hmm. because I hear good things about it. And Dan Mora is like the artist of the of the moment. He is, and you know Mark Wade, as far as as far as uh, comic book love, the lore of the, the love of the comic book lore nobody is quite encyclopedic nice pick thank you i i appreciate the shout out to uh the world's finest my first pick not my number one pick but my first pick i'm gonna go with something that it's an anthology it's from image comics and the premise of it intrigued me because it, it is a bunch of different writers and i think artists all working on it the, the book is called Swan Songs <gasps> from Image Comics. Was that on your list Absolutely as well? Absolutely was on my list, yeah. Okay. Yeah. The the premise of it, it's 192 pages, six issues. Basically, the, it's the end. It, it's discussing all different forms of things ending. The end of the world, the end of a marriage, the end of Eden, the end of a sentence, the end of <laughs> Anhedonia, what? even the end of the sidewalk. <laughs> So I'm reading the description. I'm reading the description here. Along and along for the terminal ride are some of industry's best and brightest artists: Martin Simmons, uh, Department of Truth, Casper Wingard, Homesick Pilots. I'm not mm, even that familiar good. with a lot of these uh, names. Felipe Andrade, The Many Deaths of Layla Starr, Caitlin Yarsky, who's worked on Black Hammer. Uh, each are contributing a chapter in their respective and beloved styles, resulting in a stunning melange of powerful stories that weave their way through death, love, divorce, crime, therapy, and language itself. Mm. Very intriguing. Mm. It, it's written by W. Is, is Maxwell he, Prince, who's he, the writer of Ice Cream Man, yeah. Aha, uh -huh. okay. So he writes all the issues, and there's different I artists that he's so. working with. Yeah, one of the artists is Martin Marazzo, who is the artist on Ice Cream Man. They they have a team up in there as well. I mean, the, the cover is is... I don't know who's done the cover... But it reminds me a bit of Senkovich, Bill Senkovich, Senkevich. Mm. Uh, it's not him, yeah. but I can't tell who it is. So it looks quite serious. And like when you compare the stuff that he does on Ice Cream Man, which sometimes can be serious, but there is a very dark humour to it. I kind of feel like it's so varied that this is probably a similar approach in how varied it's going to be, but much shorter tales. Uh, more experimental stuff it, it's very much it sounds like it's very much his style and i've got to a point with w maxwell prince where anything he writes i will i will read it cool it's uh it's martin simmons who did the the cover for it oh it's martin simmons okay. uh, in case you're wondering oh right yeah but i can see the i zoomed in on the signature there and i think i think that says simmons it does it does but uh good pick yeah i mean I'm happy that it was on your list as well. I I don't I'm going in blind mm. on this one, yeah, but it, the too. premise was very intriguing and I like that the theme is things that come to an end. Mm. So, Swan Song, very interesting title. I like the diversity in artistic style and see see what comes of it. Let's do it. So Swan Song, that's my my first pick of the evening. Great. I'm that, sorry I stole it from you. Don't sorry. be. I don't be. I'm really it kind of cements the the desperate dire need I have to pick this book up. I'm really yeah, looking forward I'm to it. Yeah, I'm definitely going to check this one out. I'd be intrigued to see what you make of it, man. On to you, sir. Well, my second pick was was actually going to be that. So I'm now instead going to go with Batman Beyond the animated series classics compendium 25th anniversary edition. Hello. How long is that title? That is one hell of a title. They don't need to put 25th anniversary edition on there. Do they? <laughs> they could just leave that. It's already quite a long title as it is, but it is a uh, hefty. Yeah. So this is a, a compendium from DC again, which they're, they're really getting into their compendiums at the moment. It's 752 pages. It collects the, series based on the animated series batman beyond it collects right. batman beyond volume one one to six it, uh, batman beyond volume two one to 24 which apparently has never been collected in its entirety 
And there's a little appearance from Superman Adventures number 64. I don't know if that counts as a crossover, but like it's got my little crossover aerials up. Uh, we'll, we'll have a look and see if it is. But it's Terry McGuinness, the, the future Batman. It's You'd think that the future Batman would, would be Tim Drake, be Dick Grayson. It's not. It's Terry McGuinness. And if you haven't ever seen this animated series, and I, I have only seen like one episode because it wasn't really on here, or at least not. I, I didn't know where it was on, on terrestrial telly. Terrestrial telly. How British can you sound, mate? <laughs> yeah, so he becomes... This was on my list as well, actually. Oh, was it? Yeah. I did a thievery. Just because Bat... Yeah, that's this is the episode of thievery. Batman Beyond <laughs> is one of those things that people post the animated series, Batman the Animated Series. It was a interesting direction to go, like you said, to even put somebody in the costume that wasn't a relative in the way that we would imagine right so to make that all come together and work into there was that one well-known movie the return of the joker it's basically a story about the joker coming back yeah after all these years and facing off against terry mcginnis batman yes. and it's a really cool story well funnily enough i watched a video about that the other day all about like how they changed it and what it was intended to be and how that was the studio wouldn't let them because it was like too graphic like the violence was too hard in mm. it and i think since then they've released a version that is more true to the original vision so there are a couple of versions of it out oh. there so yeah if, if you if you love batman beyond but you haven't seen that take a look because if you're a fan you've potentially got another way to to watch that that's that's a bit more true to the original concept but it's it's a funny one because like i didn't i don't think i was as intrigued by it because it wasn't a familiar Batman. I wasn't hundred percent sold on the costume. I still find the eyes a bit weird. I not the mouth or anything. That's all fine. But I don't know. It just something wasn't quite sitting with me. But I have read some of the comics since. I haven't still haven't seen the series, but I've read some of the comics, um, the more modern ones. And I don't know. I'm just drawn. Plus it says it's got compendium in the title. And it's like, well fine. If you're gonna put compendium on there, I feel like I have to get it. Hopefully they'll spell it right on this one after the Green Lantern one. Compendium. They didn't spell it right. They spelled it wrong one. Yeah. No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why How does that it? get through oh, and no one notices that? That's crazy. It can happen. I mean, it's. I've been debating on getting that. I'm not put off by the fact that it's spelled, but it's on the spine. Look, compendium. You see that? Unbelievable. But I mean, these things can That's happen. So, so many eyes can see this and just read what it's meant to say. I, I work in That's this true. area and sometimes like six people can read something and no one sees it. So it's just one of those things. Yeah. There's, yeah, there's that, uh, I saw this video the other day where somebody was saying, point out the mistake and it was just a, a phrase. Mm. And then there was a bunch of numbers in different colors and you were trying to find out what's the pattern. What is it here? That's off. And it was simply that, point out the the mistake they put the twice and uh -huh. nobody noticed it yeah to your point where people can all read it and completely escapes them yeah very interesting just one of those things well, that happens. and it you know it can happen a lot so i think they've been given a lot of flack about that but like it's oh, come on We're, like we've got a compendium of greenland of kyle rayner be happy for sake so this is now a 752 page compendium of batman beyond i like that it's it feels very complete and it's that animated universe, and I want to get my hands on this sucker. You don't necessarily know the mythos behind Batman Beyond. Bruce Wayne is is training him to be the new Batman, so there will be familiar faces in it. Give it a shot. I mean, it should be relatively family friendly as well, so that might be a draw if you want to get your kids into comics. I don't know how well it's aged, but it's something I feel I can probably give my kids once I've checked it. I can give to my kids to read, as I've done with other Batman Adventures and Superman Adventures titles. No, I think you're right. I, I think it's a great gateway for kids to get into the into comics, something that's easy for them to digest and follow along because, you know, they'll also recognize the, the animated style of the, the artwork. And it's written in, in ways that are a little bit more simpler to digest than some of the stuff that we enjoy reading, for sure. It's yeah. a good pick for kids. I like it. All right. Uh, I'm going to see if I steal one from you now. <laughs> this was a series that... I was reading as it was being released in trades originally, and I never finished it because, again, I wasn't sure how long it was going to go for. And I, I quite enjoyed it, 
what I what I recollect of reading it. But now it's coming out in a compendium, all 32 issues. It's Jeff Lemire, Dustin Nguyen, Descender, Compendium, from Image Comics, 736 pages. It's the complete Eisner Award-winning epic science fiction series. It's a nice soft cover compendium. And I feel like it's an appropriate, somewhat of an appropriate story to read these days where this young robot boy, Tim21, and his companions, it's them on this epic journey trying to stay alive in a universe where all androids androids have been outlawed and bounty hunters lurk on every planet. It's science fiction, but in some ways you, I can see the, the potential of this one day being a reality where these are the type of characters that you see around you in the world, possibly androids that are like childlike and are your friends mm -hmm. and you don't want anything to happen to them. It's interesting, especially as we go forward in the future with all this new AI and technology stuff. But there's the, the Ascender, which is the sequel to this. So this one delves yes. into a sci-fi world. And Ascender, I think, delves into the world of magic with the same set of characters. So I'm a big Jeff Lemire fan. I don't love everything he's ever done. I prefer his indie and valiant work mm -hmm. more so than some of his mainstream comic stuff like DC and Marvel. Yes. Although I, I do like his... Uh, his Green Arrow was was quite fun. I don't know if you ever read his Green Arrow with Andrea Sorrentino. Oh, I, yeah. That's a nice little... Book. I didn't like it. No? No. No? I read it, it years was, ago. Like, I'd popular. have to revisit it again. So I think it is just it another one of those that I... It's just me and it, mate. But yeah, it was very, very popular. Yeah. I just didn't like it. But for the most part, <laughs> I like... I do enjoy uh, Jeff Lemire on writing his own story without being tied down to editorial of a you know big corporation some guys just i don't feel that they they get to really spread their wing, wings and tell their story as, as much as they would like to so yeah. the sender him and dustin nguyen both uh local chaps from mm -hmm. ontario the province that i'm from not too far from toronto so yeah i'm probably going to give this a try and right now it's 40 percent discount Ooh. so i might just pre-order it as we speak there you That's go. a good shout. They, like you're saying, they probably will do the Ascender, what they call it, compendium or not. It will um, it'll be about half the the thickness, half the girth, but it's it completes the set. I haven't read Ascender yet. I've only I've read most of Descender, but didn't finish it yet. I th I, for various reasons, not not that there was anything particularly wrong with it, I just didn't finish it. No. Um. So I'm yeah. I'm looking forward to reading it in full. I've been meaning to for a long time. <laughs> Sorry, Jeff. Well, that's the thing is that you. Yeah, it's one of those situations where you're reading a little bit of everything and then the next volume comes out and it just doesn't make it in the budget for that moment in time. And it kind of it's not that it wasn't good. It's just you never get back to it because other things distract you. But or it's when the it's gap, all complete, it, the gap between the two volumes, too. you know, it's been six months. I haven't read this this series in six, seven months, eight months. What happened again? I think that's actually a big part of the hesitation to delve back in because you're just like i'm reading this and i remember liking it but i don't even remember the character's name yeah. at this point <laughs> sometimes right that happens yes so fair that that's a fair point all right okay you're number three sir nice i like that one i totally missed that that was coming out uh but probably because i i've already got the hard covers not rubbing it in my my number three Tonight, Matthew, is Fourth World Omnibus, Volume 2. It carries on from the Kirby run of Fourth World. And uh, there are a lot of people that go like, oh, Jack Kirby wouldn't like it if someone did this with this character. That's not what he invented. The Jack Kirby loved creating characters and releasing them into the wild and just mm -hmm. seeing what other people did. So, And this is what this volume is. So it's a 1,336-page it's beast of a big girthy bastard and it's coming out oversized hardcover it has got do you want me to do the list it's crazy it's it continues the numbering and for a lot of a lot of them i think there was quite a big gap between the series kind of ending and then picking up the numbering again but it was then handled by the people like steve engelhart jerry conway paul levitz keith giffen so it was like mr miracle 1925 new gods 12 to 19 adventure comics 459 to 460 brave and the bold one so it's got like guest appearances by them as well as the continuation for some reason they've chucked in superpowers volumes one two and three 
those mini series that were kind of mm. the basis of the toys they're not like in continuity stories and they were already collected in the jack kirby dc universe bronze age omnibus so a bit strange that yeah. they're in here again it feels like because i mean that's quite a lot that's um 15 issues that i personally already have from that but i guess there may be some people that don't i haven't got to them yet so i don't know how heavily the new gods feature but there is there is a mix of stuff in here man there is a mix of stuff Su- superpowers collection 13 to 23 that might be why but yeah i it's it's um super team family 15 secret society super villains one to five there's like it's all sorts of random issues in here it continues the story of the fourth world so which which is your dark side new gods mr miracle mr miracle is one of my favorite characters I love Mr. Miracle. I think largely just the look of him the fourth world. not having his nose, but you can see his mouth in his mask and all that. There's something about those character designs that are horrendous, but brilliant because yeah. it's such a loud costume. Yeah. Hi. The, the the fourth world is always one of those. Whenever they, they, they delve into that, I, I don't know. I can't help myself, but want to read on. And sometimes to my own detriment, like I was really excited for the John Byrne fourth world omnibus. I read it and I was, it was kind of lackluster. Yeah. But I had to give it a shot because I just love those characters. It's such it's cool stuff. Weird, isn't it? There's something so, about it. You got it. Even just the way things are named. And I, now I can't remember what he calls it. It was like his cod that the, the um, Orion's bike thing. Is it like his the Astro Force? But yeah, he's got like his astro bike or something. My astro strap on, something like that. It's something I'm pretty sure it's astro strap on. Uh, I, I don't know. I mean, it's just so. It's like it's this ridiculous level of cosmic that's so incomprehensible, and you just go, okay, <laughs> Kirby. It's okay. I. I don't know, man. I I often say that he's he had one of those minds and. From what some people who had interacted with him, who have been in comics for a long time, they said that his personality was like, he was a friendly guy, but he was also kind of like, he couldn't be bothered. He was like Ben Grimm in a lot of Mm. ways. Artist. But what was going on in his, yeah, what was going on in his head, I'm I'm just so curious of what he was thinking about and and what he was reading to kind of inspire him because he, he did he was a World War II veteran. He he saw a lot of stuff in his life. And when yeah. he came back and was on that creative streak, man, literally. Cre- it could well be that I don't know how ideas, his mind survived I, what he saw. You know, escapism. But that's... the concept, yeah, the concepts that, that he came up with that Stan Lee put his words to and all of that kind of stuff. You're just like, where have you been? I'm going to risk reading Omega Bird's comments. I recently read Kirby's New Gods run and it was bananas. The art is obviously gorgeous, but the sheer amount of ideas Kirby packs into every issue is so impressive. I might have to pick up that new omnibus just to see how other writers handle Orion and his Astro Strap-On. I told you it was called an Astro Strap-On. No one ever believes me. That was, again, one of those blind buys, the the Orion omnibus. I just had a, from Walt Simon said, had a blast reading it. I know that you weren't the biggest fan of it. I re-bought it. I bought it. Really? Yes. That's so funny. I just, yeah, I love Kirby's world. Yeah. I just can't, I can't help myself. There's something really bombastic and strange and I can't, I can't even explain. I'm I'm really looking forward to this book. I hope they do more fourth world omnis as well. Cause, but if they carry on from here, it'll go more into, I think, unless I'm mistaken, it should go more into the kind of post-crisis era. So they're like post-1986 onwards. Okay. And there's tons of stuff. There's right. tons of stuff still that that hasn't been collected or has only been in trades. So it'd, it'd be good to get that. I just want more Mr. Miracle. I'll take any Mr. Miracle, please. Thank you. Yeah, that's cool. A lot of DC stuff for you today, Dave. That's cool. Oh, God, it's all DC. Not your, not your usual thing. Yeah, yeah that's right. okay. That's all right. Uh, is it time for our commercial break? Oh, uh, uh Yeah. <laughs> Uh oh, you're not ready oh, again. Oh, Sorry about God. that. Yeah, no, absolutely. Yes, I'm pretending not to be ready. <laughs> New to the Omniverse Comics Guide. This fortnight that's that's just passed, we have the previous episode of this podcast, which is the Comics Q and A with viewer questions in. It's available on on Pod and Video. Events and crossovers this month. We've got Homecoming, which is just cosmic weirdness mixed in with some of the more Earthbound stories from Marvel. So you've got Adam Warlock, you've got Spider-Man, you've got the X-Men, you've got the Champions, Captain Marvel, 
The Dark Age from DC, that's the second major Earth 2 story arc, so it introduced the, the new Earth 2 versions of Batman and Superman. DC versus Marvel, the Amalgam Age of Comics, kind of a duo reading order, because it's the DC versus Marvel event and the Amalgam Age of Comics, which kind of sits in between DC versus Marvel. There's a lot of hype about this at the minute, because they've just announced the two DC Marvel Omnis that are coming out in August. This lists the order to read all of this in because on top of that then there's the return of the amalgam age of comics which is the the 12 issues that come out the following year which are all set in the amalgam universe features we got kickstarter spotlight for early feb there are some really really good kickstarters on there including one from rage studios called cauldron which is a horror anthology yes. and it looks very good i've been with the the creators of the cauldron book mm -hmm. from the ground floor when they were first first launching it and this uh hardcover now collects the first four issues that they had put out they were trying to make it ah. like a seasonal thing and they're kind of like heavy metal magazine yeah that's the, the I premise see. that they wanted it to be oh. so it's it's been really cool to see it all come together yeah yeah oh, it's wow. got some cool stuff in there there's a real mix yeah. apart from that as a, as a major horror ser horror anthology series you've got all sorts of other stories on, on the kickstarter spotlight we do one of these every two weeks as well so have a look, jump on. Some of it features big name people. Some of it features just great ideas from creators you've never heard of that make me just go, I want that. I want that book. That is random or that is interesting or whatever it might be. So there's some fantastic creators out there. So hop on. And yeah, yeah the only other thing I was going to mention, jump on our Discord, join the Discord, join the chat, sit in the background and listen to the chat. Um, do what you like, share your collection, talk about stories you recommend, do whatever you want. It's essentially what we do here. You can jump on the Discord and do with a whole bunch of like-minded yeah. oh like-minded people and Omega Bread. So come on in, <laughs> join the chat, and we'd love to have you. Uh, okay, back to our countdown, our incoming lists. Let's do it. Okay, my number three. I'm going to go into the big two now. I'm going to do an epic collection. I always like finding an epic collection to recommend to people. This one caught my attention because it'll be a nice two-piece added to your collection where you'll have the full series. And this is a Astonishing X-Men epic collection from oh. John Cassidy, Joss Whedon. It's the first 12 issues. I think the series is 25 in its totality with one giant size issue right at the end, if, right. I, if memory serves. You're right. And it's a nice cover to cover, complete story. And I mean, it's it's one of those books where it's after everything that the, the X-Men go through with different books and series and starts and stops and what have you, this is uh, somewhat of a like, not a reset, but you, you go back to a point where you can recognize the team and it feels like the X-Men that you kind of knew and loved. It, it, there's sometimes where there's really great runs, but they can be somewhat polarizing depending on if you like the writer, if you like the direction he went. But this one mm. is kind of like, let's set it back to basics. It's the X-Men that you kind of know and, and recognize and 25 issue story. It's a great ride. It so is. as an epic collection, if you, if you don't get it in the omnibus format, I think two nice epic collections does the trick. Mm. And it's, it's cool that Marvel is uh, decided to kind of go this direction and put a couple of other things in the epic format it's a different spine and things like that i know you're not the biggest fan of the epic spines and yeah, whatnot but no, sorry i do like i do like that they collect a nice chunk of comics they for do. a good good point hmm. right absolutely so, they absolutely do it's funny because like i've run two kind of crossover parts from that period and every time i do any posts about that period uh, people go like, I love this. This got me back into comics, or this was like got me back in the X Men, or this was like I was kind of okay with X Men, but it got me really psyched for them again. It's it seems to be like you're saying it. It doesn't seem to be that polarizing. It seems to be a predominantly a very well received thing. It doesn't matter what your opinion is on Joss Whedon at this point. Almost just forget that bit. It shouldn't downplay yeah. the work of everyone else involved, and it shouldn't downplay the fact that it is just a really good fun run. It's a fun run. Yeah, it's a well it's a well written comic. Yeah. And and again, uh, John Cassidy on all all the issues, mm. which is it's always nice to read a book where there's that sort of completion of the artist and the writer getting their vision out. And like Cassidy has always been kind of hit or miss with the schedule. Right. So to get him like in Planetary, it's nice that he did all 27 issues, even though it took years for it to happen. Yeah. Either way. 
it's a nice little piece to add to the collection because John Cassidy's artwork is is c- cinematic to say the least. Mm. So enjoy enjoy this book. It's definitely uh, one worth checking out if if you like X Men, even peripherally. It's a worthwhile X Men book to to look out for. Yes, it is. Excellent call, sir. Excellent call. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Cheers. All right. All right. All right. Oh. Okay. So my number four for this very eve is Sex Criminals, the complete edition. See what they did there? See what they did? They made a jizz joke. I did. If you've got kids (laughs) in the room, cover their ears and eyes. Make them leave. Sex Criminals is about two people who find that when they climax, that's a horrible word. (laughs) When they climb, when when they get to spuff times, they stop time. So they use that power to go and commit crimes so they can they can get into everyone's everything is stopped and they can move around um uninterrupted having just spunked so uh, it's so it's a guy meets a girl and she can they both can do it they're clearly based on so it's written by matt fraction it's drawn by chip Zdarsky. you kind of get the impression that the two main characters are based on matt fraction and kelly sue DeConnick because they're together, at least they were at the time. I don't know if they still are, I don't really care. But I really love Matt Fraction so. as a writer. Yeah, like, I think he's, uh, he, he's, he does some really smart stuff. And, you know, just because it's about sex stuff, it doesn't mean it's not smart or funny or witty or clever. They introduce all sorts of different, because they delve into their sexual experiences as well. And there's one particular thing that just took, it just caught people's imagination, which was brimping. I kind of, as a part of me that doesn't want to ruin it for anyone who doesn't know what it is, you can either Google it or you can get the book and find out what it is. I think it's called brimping anyway. It's, yeah, some very odd practices. But I don't know how it ended because I, I never finished it because I think I wanted to switch to the hardcovers and then it was competing with other stuff in the deluxe format at the same time. Right. And then I ended up never finishing the series. So I want to know how it ends. I want to read it on a one sitting. Again, it was one of those books that came out in, what, five volumes, I think? I think it was five, five or six volumes. And, of course, you got that gap to wait. Uh, whereas this is issues one to 30 and a special one-shot issue 69. See what they do there? And it's uh-huh, 824 uh-huh. pages of crime and orgasms in one nice pink complete, gir- Complete edition. Yeah, I've never read these books, and I think I'm at a point where I I would give it a, a shot to just see what all the fuss was about at the time, because I remember people t- – and then I remember sometimes books would come out and they would be polybagged because they couldn't be on the store shelf. Yeah. So it had all of this sort of like mystique about it. It did. But the premise, I'm like, you orgasm and you time travel? <laughs> That sounds like fun. It's just fun. That sounds like it could be some fun. I mean, the, right? that's a good night out. What'd you it do? is a good night <laughs> out. The thing is, there was the, I think the deluxe editions weren't just called Sex Criminals Deluxe Edition. They were called Big Hard Sex Criminals. They, they went shameless on it. What was that's quite right. funny, though, is when you took off the dust cover, it made out that it was a perfectly decent book to read on a train. <laughs> so I can't remember what that I've got it over there, and I just can't reach it from here due to not being Mr. Fantastic. But yeah, they they really played about with the ideas of it being quite an adult themed book. So it was yeah. it's it's fun. I don't know how it ends. I don't know if it's got a great ending. It was it was a fun read. I'm not expecting highbrow genius from it. But Matt Fraction, I think we sometimes forget what a good writer he can be. And I kind of find that like people got a bit funny about maybe when he was on X Men or something. Or I don't know. But like when I think back to some of the stuff he's think- written, there's some great comics from him over the years. Yeah, I think I think uh, you're right, but almost similar to that sort of Jeff Lemire thing, if you leave him be and let him tell the story he wants to tell, he'll it'll be really good. Like I think of uh, Hawkeye or um, the Iron Fist stuff that he did with Ed Boon oh, collaborating on that. Yes, right, yeah. really, really great stuff. But then there's other things where people, like you said, the X Men. It's just things that are forgettable. I like I haven't his heard extremely. I never read it to say. I haven't heard great things about his Thor run. Not to say that mm. I, I have a proper opinion, Don't but people it. have been kind of hit or miss on that. Mm. So either way, him and Chip Zdarsky, this this should be an interesting com- complete edition to check out. I'm sure you'll get your money's worth. Absolutely. 
don't show the kids. If you've just che- if you've just tuned in, like BC Scrubs has, you're probably wondering why we're talking about Spaff all the time. But Omega Bread says, I own the trades and have yet to read them. I need to know what brimping is, so I might have to get them off the shelf tomorrow. So who doesn't want to know what brimping is right now? Just saying it, people are probably going, I need to just Google this on my phone on uh, private mode. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna look up brimping when we're done. <laughs> <laughs> gonna gonna right. try nice, it. Nice. Maybe. Maybe. Maybe not. Let's go with a try tested and true series. Jeff Loeb, Tim Sale. They are known for doing the uh you know the the color Marvel series. Hmm. Sounds weird to say. They do the colored books, <laughs> but they literally do, right? Yes. They got the four Captain America White, yeah. Daredevil Yellow, yeah. Spider Man Blue, and the one I'm talking about is Hulk Gray, Gallery Edition six issues that they did for the hulk it's not quite an origin but it is also the early days of the character because he's still gray and we know that that was coloring misprint at the time that he turned out to be gray in those first couple no, of it was issues, the original or choice the of colors around. yeah it was the, the originally they chose okay. gray and then it <clears throat> i think when they saw what it looked like in print it was just too muddy so because the print in the 60s right. was just like not up to scratch to be able to do that so they switched it to green right, in issue right. Two. That makes sense. so he was only gray for one issue at that point Right, right. And this this story is him. It's it's somewhat reminiscent of maybe some of the things you might have seen in the movie, The Incredible Hulk, where there's those moments where he's in the cave with Betty, uh, Betty Ross, like these very touching, soft moments where it's sort of like that King Kong. And I, I don't know the, the blonde character in the King Kong, but it's that sort of like monster being very protect yeah i don't know either but being very protective and you get to see the soft side of the monster while also seeing the monster come out it's a it's a good hulk story if you've never read the hulk before and you want to give something a try just to see how you might feel about the psychology that goes along with reading about the hulk and the main players that are in his world and what his motivations are this is i think uh the the jeff loeb and tim sale stuff i'm, I'm a big fan of those series of books i think they capture the heart of those classic characters hmm. yeah so gray hulk gallery edition check it out yeah it's just yeah. a just a yeah. and fun hulk story man yeah and you know tim sale is one of those uh artists that was extremely unique in his style you can recognize it immediately it, it jeff Loeb had described him as like he when he wanted to do challengers of the unknown he had wanted an artist whose faces looked ugly that mm-hmm. was his description and Tim Sale has a way to kind of bring out the pick like characters that you're accustomed to how they look. He can make them kind of look a little bit like creepier than usual. Yeah. Think of his Batman stuff. And yeah. unfortunately he's not with us no more, Tim Sale. But it's always nice to look at at his his stuff and remember just what a good storyteller he was. Okay, my last one for the night, dude, is X Factor by Peter David, Omnibus, Volume Three. Do you know why? Because it's Peter David, in it? And it's X-Factor, in it? So, like, you got it, don't you? Let's see how many pages have we got. 1,160 pages. It collects X-Factor's 2005 series, issues 40 to 50, which then goes into the number jump where they go like, oh, it's now issue 200 for no apparent reason. <sighs> that really bugs me that they do that, but okay, fine. So issues 40 to 50, 200 to 232, and shoved in the middle in there is issue 224.1 because let's make it more confusing with decimals. And Nation X, X Factor number one. The one shot that ties in with the Nation X event, which was around the map fraction period. Oh, it's all coming full circle. And the circle's got an X through it. Oh, God, it's all connected. This is one of the best periods in this whole run. It's There's time travel. There's the PI stuff. Some of it veers into like the the links to the mainstream X books a little bit more. They move to New York, so you get some guest stars in it, like the Fantastic Four. I'd love this series, man. I love this series. This this will I think off the top of my head, this is the period where most of the books, most of the volumes in paperback were getting five stars from me. Mm. That's how good it is. And it's it's like it's not necessarily the biggest names. In terms of artists, you got uh, Valentin Delandro. I think he, uh, David Yardin was doing some of the cover art, and so, I think he was doing a number of the covers at the time. I do like David Yardin's art. Sorry, BC Scrubs, but he's, I, yeah, does it for me. Sorry. I have volume two of the uh, the Omnibus. I bought it based off of no. your highest recommendation, and I've only heard good things about it. 
So this is going to definitely make it on my shelf too because this is the stuff that I've only heard. I've never heard anybody said that X Factor stuff from Peter David. Terrible. Everyone said you have to read that. Do you know why most people don't though? It's like with the spoilers thing. And I know I've probably mentioned this before, but like he was saying, please don't spoil the end of this issue. Please don't spoil the end of this. And no one did. And you know why? It's because no one was reading it. No one was reading it. Everyone's reading the Spidey books and the and the X-Men books and, you know, Avengers. No one's reading X Factor. And it's a shame because I, I still think it was like of of the books that came out when I was buying single issues around this time still, of all the titles that were coming out, X Factor was the one I read first. When I'd pick up my bundle for the week, X Factor was on top. Mm. It's great. It never disappointed. It's funny. It gets you upset. It makes you angry. It's clever. It's everything. It's literally everything you want. It's a great team book. And like sometimes they hate each other. And sometimes like your main character is such a dick, but you still love him. And the powers are odd. You know, he's the multiple man. What's going on with his relationship with Layla Miller? Like, mm, that's a bit weird and creepy. Is it? Is it? Or is that going to make sense right, at some point? Right. It's just, it's a great series. And even, even again, like there, there are a couple of storylines that don't 100% hit the mark. But on average, it's way above what a lot of other Marvel titles were doing at the time. Such a strong book. Yeah, that's that's going to be read pretty soon. Uh, it's going to probably maybe in March I might open up that second volume omnibus and get into it because yeah, I want to I want to be caught up with uh, when the next one shows up. Nice, nice pick. I was almost going to pick it, but I said I hope Dave has it on his list because I know how much you love that not. series and it's your guy, yeah. Peter David. Yeah, yeah that's Pete. great. Get well, Pete. He's not well. Is yes, he? yeah. absolutely. I uh, know. I don't think so. Okay. Uh, my final pick. I'm going to keep this one simple. I'm going to go with Superboy, Man of Tomorrow. Mm. Part of the reason is because I'm rooting for the hometown artist, Janoy Lindsay, who was featured in the Omniverse Comics Guide last year on uh, one of our Fan Expo episodes. Him and... Uh, Jamal Campbell. Yeah, we we got to talk to both the both artists from the Superman family. So now the trade is going to be coming out. You know, Connor Kent, he's like a Kyle Rayner and Wally West. There's this following that these characters have that people just love them because of what they meant to them during the time that they were reading those comics. So I'm happy that he's still around and he hasn't been. He, there's been a couple times where he's been out of publishing. They killed him off and he's disappeared and whatever. But to know that he's back on the scene and he's got his own little series. And I think it follows. Uh, what is the series that they have? Not fine. No, not final night. Not darkest night. I'll look it up. Oh, dark crisis. There's a series. Dark crisis. Yeah. There you go. Was that any good? Did you read that? I'm literally spoilers. I'm literally working on doing a reading order for it now. Okay. So I want to do Dark Crisis and, on Infinite Earths and Crisis on Infinite Earths in the same year. <laughs> what a dick. Yes. Yeah, that's a lot. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, this, these take place after the events of Dark Crisis. Connor Kent has no idea where he fits in on Earth. He feels disconnected from the only family he's ever known and doesn't want to rely on his fellow Teen Titan friends. You know, his bravado, swagger, it's it's Connor Kent. And I'm, I'm really interested to see Janoy Lindsay's art in in sequential storytelling format it's just exciting to see guys that you you saw it like the little artist alley table that they had to pay for and now they're big comic book guests and at their own panels and uh -huh. it's just yeah so i'm gonna pick this up just to support the guys so there you go little, home, that, little hometown shout out that is reason enough i think also though like if you look at a lot of the dawn of dc books that are coming out at the minute it's it's hard not to be excited about a lot of them like the green lantern war journal it's a war zone. I can't remember the name of it. It's really hard to be excited about stuff I can't remember the name of. But there's a lot of stuff that's coming out that I'm going like, I need to have everything. And this yeah. is another one of those books. Were there any things on uh, on your list that didn't quite make the cut, but they're, there was, you want to mention them? There was one, and I wish it was on the list, but it, uh, it just didn't, it didn't make it because there was a fight. Scarlet Couture, the Munich Files from Des Taylor. So it's the second series of, of Scarlet Couture. I just love Des Taylor's art. I love his art. And I'll literally just pick up anything he's doing at this point. There's some other stuff, but yeah, no, that's the only one I want to talk about. Did you? Okay. All right. Uh, on mine, 
both of us were picking some of the things that we had listed. Let me see here. There was something epic from Image Comics. Uh, fan favorite Spawn and Punisher artist Seisman Kudransky introduces a world where the only limitation is your imagination. Imagination is real outside our perception. Creative thought takes physical form with only a handful of individuals known as epics able to interact with this wonderful, wondrous hidden world. Hmm. 14-year-old Danny Dillon accepting these responsibilities himself won't be easy or safe. Lose yourself in a world of endless fantasy and creativity. Superheroes, monsters, magical creatures, cartoon characters live and breathe alongside us. The idea of imagination is real got me. Mm -hmm. That's where I was sold. Mm. I think about that kind of stuff sometimes. And when you talk to certain creators, like a J.M. DeMatteis, they kind of they get into the metaphysics of creating and where these ideas come from and what the, are they real things somewhere else. So this that got my wheel spinning. Imagination being blowing. real. So. Yeah. That's right. You know what? Nice. There's a couple things That's in nice. March to look forward to. That's a good pick. Yeah. I'm interested. I'm going to have a look at that that book actually because I've not that hasn't hit my radar. So good yeah. chat. So nice, nice, nice. Well, thank you everybody for tuning in. Don't forget to uh, rate and review, subscribe, hit the like button, and come visit omniversecomics.guide. It's worth your while. Do it. And for the for the full episodes that you get here. Subscribers get them, right? Mm -hmm. They so get that subscribers little extra bonus get, footage. Set. They do indeed. They get the full unedited version. They also get all the exclusives, like the what to read before. So the, those entries cover what to read before major events, like uh, Infinity Gauntlet, Legends. You also get the official Handbook of the Marvel Universe, Book of the Dead, Where Are They Now, which covers people that were listed as deceased. Uh, are they back? Are they not back? There's the Many Armors of Iron Man, which takes a chronological look through all his suits of armor over the years, three in each entry. As well as that, we've got the reading order trackers. So they're for events and for character reading orders. And as you go through and read through a character history, or as you go through and read an event, you can you can tick those off as well. So if you subscribe, then they're, then there's something that you can download directly. There'll be more and more features being added all the time. There's going to be a new DC-focused one soon as well. It's, I, I really, really want to jump on, but I'm not going to say what it is yet. Loads of new stuff being added all the time. So if you do jump on and support us, I mean, the more people that support us, I've got a ton of crossovers, right, in my back pocket that I don't have time to do because I have a day job. If you support us, I will quit my day job and work for you, and I will do crossovers all the time. I will cover everything all the time. So yeah, that's my promise. You really to you. will. I will. Don't I will do him. that. I will do that. If you want to support the Omni Omniverse Comics Guide and get more and more stuff from us, if you like in what we do and you want more, hit us up and support. And we appreciate every support we already have. Thank you so much. You will be well rewarded in the kingdom of heaven. No, you'll be well rewarded. <laughs> Yes, thank you. Thank you, everybody, for your support and all the folks who tune in Wednesdays to hang out with us on the Twitch Live. We appreciate it, of course. Dave, I bid you adieu, my friend. Adieu. Next week, we'll be back with a top 10. Everyone, come back ready for another top 10. It's going to be a good one. I've missed top 10s, man. Yeah, yeah. I know. I know. It's been a while. We're, we're, we're due for one. Yeah. All right. Thank you, everybody. Omniverse Comics Guide, guys. <laughs>